40 years or so, about 200 species have gone completely extinct. The natural extinction rate is one species every 500 years. So they're currently disappearing several thousand times faster than they should be. If we want to save the frogs, we have to know why they're in trouble. Number one problem worldwide is habitat destruction, chopping down forests, draining swamps, converting natural habitat into housing developments, shopping malls, roads, timber production, all kinds of problems. Santa Cruz long-toed salamander from California, one of the world's most endangered amphibians, only known to survive at 23 different ponds, and their ponds are surrounded by this type of agriculture, inhospitable terrain. If they needed to get to another pond, they'd have to go out into the sunlight, cross the roads, potentially get picked off by predators. So here's sugarcane, monoculture, sugarcane replaces rainforest in lots of tropical countries. Kadim Nagar National Park, who's been there? Who helped us save the frogs day at, at Kadim Nagar in a mesh? All right, yeah, so I visited Kadim Nagar last year, and that's right inside the park, illegal tea plantation. So just because places are protected on paper doesn't mean they're actual good habitat for amphibians. Palm oil, Borneo, Indonesia, and lots of other tropical countries replacing tropical rainforest. Gold mining, uh, bauxite mining, all types of mining, legal and illegal. This one's illegal in Ghana, West Africa. Frogs get taken out of the wild for use as pets, especially brightly colored species like poison dart frogs. This is a uh, Phyllobates terribilis, the most toxic frog known on the planet and it got taken by police at customs in the Bogota, Colombia airport. People were trying to export it, smuggle it out of the country for the pet trade. So when I saw it, it was hanging out in a zoo that was using it for educational purposes after it got recovered from the police. About a billion frogs get taken out of the wild each year to be eaten. Frog legs, sometimes the whole frog. Indonesia is the number one consumer and exporter of frogs for food. France, Belgium, USA are the top importers of frogs for food. California red-legged frog, state amphibian of California, nearly got eaten to extinction by the California gold miners in the late 1800s. Invasive species non-native trout get stocked in high mountain streams and can completely decimate amphibian populations such as of the mountain yellow-legged frogs in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California used to be one of the most common frogs in California. Now they're gone from about 93% of the ponds where they used to live. They cannot coexist where the fish are. If the fish get removed with nets, the frogs can come back. Red swamp crayfish get used as bait by fishermen and they escape or get set free and can eat salamanders and frogs. American bullfrog, largest frog in North America, big frog, big frogs have big mouths. What do frogs eat? What's that? Anything that fits in the mouth. Anything that fits in their mouth. Good answer, good answer. Clap. Round of applause. Round of applause. Hey, what do frogs eat? Anything that fits in their mouth. Do you make frog calls? No? Okay, not yet. Okay, the American bullfrog, large frog, big mouth, they eat whatever fits in their mouth. A couple million 
American bullfrogs, which are not native to California, they're native to the eastern USA and Canada, they had imported into California each year to primarily to be eaten and they get released in the wild. There's now millions of these frogs in California eating native wildlife, including California red-legged frogs, which is the largest native frog of California. So they can eat big animals. One of these got found with a 33-inch, that would be maybe 80 centimeters or so, 80 centimeter snake inside of its stomach. Pollution and pesticides comes from all kinds of places, cars, people's houses, factories near the water. It goes into the water, it goes up into the air, travels in clouds to the mountains, comes down in rainfall, and can pollute distant localities. Atrazine, one of the world's most commonly used herbicides, can turn male frogs into females at two and a half parts per billion. It's an endocrine disruptor. It's the most common pesticide in the United States, groundwater, rainwater, and tap water. Been banned in the European Union for 15 years, but still in use in many countries. I'm not sure if it is here. I'll say probably. It's probably in use in at least 40 countries. Climate change, global warming can affect frogs regardless of where they live, even if they live in Yellowstone National Park, like this boreal chorus frog. Yellowstone National Park, the ponds have been drying up. There's been persistent droughts for 50 years. So it doesn't matter if it's a national park. Yellowstone's been a national park since 1872, world's oldest national park, but it still has frogs on the decline due to the climate change. And frogs and salamanders that live up in cloud forests in tropical regions, they have trouble because as it dries up in those places, the clouds, it warms up, the cloud levels rise, and then the leaf litter where they put their eggs dries up and it's no longer suitable. Chytrid fungus is what I did my PhD research on in Australia and it's responsible for about 100 amphibian extinctions around the world. 100 species going extinct. This fungus, Petraco chytrum dendrobotitis, has been spread around the world probably because humans shit about 100 million amphibians around the world each year for pets, food, bait, laboratory usage, and for zoos. And when we ship amphibians around the world, their diseases go with them. Chytrid fungus does a really good job living anywhere where it's cool and moist. And that means most mountains around the world. So once the amphibian disease arrives, it's almost impossible to eradicate it from the wild because you've got billions of zoospores living on the animals in the, in the soil, in the water. So the best thing we can do is prevent the disease from spreading by stopping the shipment of amphibians around the world. And all these problems are bad enough by themselves, but really a lot of them are happening in unison. So you get synergistic effects, which means the final outcome is worse than the sum of the individual parts. So lots of different problems that amphibians are facing, which is the reason that they're now the most threatened group of animals on the planet. Frogs are important, but I will hold out and tell you about that later. You can think about why are frogs important? Why are you here? But right now I want to get us off schedule, so I'm going to invite the next speaker who is, I can't remember who our next speaker is, Sneha. Come on up. Sneha Darwakar, I believe. I'm, I'm going to pronounce lots of people's names wrong this weekend. I apologize. I'll let Sneha introduce herself, Save the Frogs Travel Grant winner. Congratulations.